Hey folks, welcome to Shooting Up North. I'm your host, Lewis Carlin. We're heard right here on the Alliance Pro Wrestling Network. Thank you so much for joining me. If you're watching for the first time, please consider hitting that subscribe button. If you want to follow me on social media, I'm on Twitter at Shooting Up North, Instagram at Alliance PW Network, and feel free to join our Facebook group, the Alliance Pro Wrestling Network. All righty, what time is it? It's shout out time. It is shout out time. I want to give a shout out to Malcolm Lloyd and Joe Hosack. Malcolm Lloyd, Joe Hosack, thank you very much for purchasing a super thanks comment for our YouTube channel in support of our YouTube channel. I greatly appreciate it. Malcolm Lloyd, Joe Hosack, thank you very much for purchasing that super thanks comments in support of the youtube channel the shooting up north the alliance pro wrestling network youtube channel and if you're looking to support the podcast if you're enjoying the content uh, and you're looking to support the pod the, the podcast if you'd like to support the podcast somehow in a very inexpensive way consider purchasing a super thanks comment uh, depending on the location that you're in uh, i believe they start about two dollars uh, per comment. Uh, it's a super thanks comment. You get a fun animation added to the video that you purchase the comments for, and uh, you get a colorful comment that um, you can add to that video as well. And of course, you'll get a shout out from me here on the podcast as well. At the end of the podcast, you will get um, a credit uh, at the end. There will be a credit page uh, thanking you again with your name on it. And that will be the uh, the the next pre-recorded podcast after uh, you have left that super thanks. Uh, so if you want to leave the super thanks on each video, there's some icons under the video. You'll see a thanks icon. Just click on that thanks icon and uh, you could um, pick an amount. Again, it's, uh, I believe they started, depending on where you, uh, the location that you're in or what country you live in, I believe they started about $2, very inexpensive. Uh, so again, if you want to support the podcast, uh, feel free to uh, purchase a super thanks comment. And of course, whether you do or you don't, I, I greatly appreciate each and every one of you. Each and every one of you. Well, one more time. Thank you, Malcolm Lloyd, Joe Hosack. Really, really appreciate it. Okay, so let's get into the Impact Wrestling Review. Uh, Impact on Access TV for August 18th, 2022. Let's get into it. Uh, so the show opens with a recap of Alex Shelley versus Josh Alexander. Their world title match at Emergence. Their epic match at Emergence. Uh, so they, they open with a recap of that. The official show starts... We get the first match, which is a four-way dance uh, between Black Tarus, Trey Miguel, Ray Horace, and Laredo Kid. Uh, so uh, this is a Lucha Libre match, and the crowd chanting Lucha Libre throughout um, most much of the match. Uh, but this was a great way to start the show. What a what a what a match this was! Uh, some of the action that took place here. Um, it starts. We get a triple drop kick early that knocks uh, Black Tarus to the outside of the ring. Uh, Black Tarus comes in. He hits a succession of big moves on all three of them. Uh, Trey Miguel hits a Rana on Kid. Kid was standing on the outside of the ropes. A Laredo Kid. Uh, Trey Miguel comes running. He he does just leaps up. Grabs his wraps his legs around the head of Laredo Kid, spins around, does a rana to the outside, and uh, actually catapults Laredo Kid right into Black Tarus, who was on the outside as well. That was a great, great spot. Great spot there. Um, Kid and Miguel, at one point, they're going shot for shot. Uh, Laredo Kid hits a reverse rana on Tarus, which was a, which was a nice spot. Uh, Ray Horace, he, um, he does, uh, from the top rope, he does a backflip spin to the outside on Black Tarus and Trey Miguel. Uh, Kid hits a moonsault on all three as well, which was nice. So we had some great spots in this one. Great spots. Uh, the end came when Black Tarus hits uh, the Destination Hellhole on the Raider Kid and um, wins the match. Uh, Black Tarus victorious in this one. But what a great way to open the show. My goodness. What a great way to open a show. This is this was a great, great Lucha Libre exhibition. What a fantastic, fantastic match. It was crowd pleasing as they were into it. They were chanting Lucha Libre um, throughout the match, as I, as I mentioned. Uh, lots of big spots as, ex as expected. I was expecting the big spots. I'm sure a lot of people were as well. And that's what we got here. Very exciting match. All four are so talented. The only thing is, I wish this match went on a little longer, but it was because um, the ending kind of came out of nowhere. 
Uh, it, it seemed it just came out of nowhere. He just got Laredo Kid and hit the, um, the Destination uh, Hellhole. Is that what it's called? Um, yeah, Destination Hellhole. And um, it just seemed like he came out of nowhere. But I wish the match went a little longer. But again, the, it's, it's the TV time that they have. So they have the, they have the, um, it's a shorter match. They don't, they only have so much time on TV. So this is the type of Lucha Libre um, uh, wrestling match that Impact Wrestling should build on. This was fantastic, fantastic, fantastic Lucha Libre style match. And they should really build on this. They should, I, I want to see more of these matches. I want to see more of these matches. These these types of matches are fantastic ways to open the show. And uh, like I said, really crowd-pleasing. The crowd was pumped. The crowd was into it. I was I was into it. I was in awe at some of the moves. Uh, so great, great way to open the show. Absolutely loved it. And uh, excuse me. You'll have to excuse me. I'm a little congested. I don't know why, but been congested for the last uh, few days uh but anyway but this was a great way to open the show and i i hope we see more of it um and i, I want to see a lot more of ray horse ray horse is so smooth you know they're all so smooth uh, black two is so talented he was the powerhouse of the of the four and i'm surprised this wasn't for the exhibition championship either uh it would have been it would have been nice if the exhibition uh exhibition title shot was on the line this one it would have um, made it that more uh intriguing uh, but nonetheless we got a great opening match <clears throat> Trey Miguel, terrific as usual. Laredo Kid, terrific as usual. And uh, like I said, I want to see more of these uh, Lucha Libre type matches. Then we get a, a look at uh, Killer Kelly's uh, debut match. Uh, as it's going on, Ziggy Dice, Johnny Swinger, Jackson Stone, Jason Hodge, and Jack Price are all watching Kelly's debut and they're praising her. Tasha Steele and Savannah Evans show up. Uh, Tasha Steele verbally lays into uh, Swinger and Ziggy Dice, primarily Ziggy Dice, uh, for, um, for showing praise to uh, Killer Kelly. Um, Killer Kelly then shows up. Uh, they get in. She gets into a, a verbal exchange uh, with Steels, um, but uh, she makes her way towards Steels. But Evans uh, steps in front of Killer Kelly, and then we get the match set for later on. Killer Kelly against uh, Savannah Evans um, later in the on the show. Uh, but one thing I want to I want to I want to bring up here: Jackson Stone, Jason Hotch, and Jack Price should not should not be with Ziki Dice and Johnny Swinger. This is the future, the, the possible future of Impact Wrestling, and you're going to stick with them with with two perennial losers. I'm sorry, I, I I don't like to use that word, but they're perennial losers. They're they're a comedy team, and you want the you want your future, you want the possible future of Impact Wrestling, possible future stars of Impact Wrestling to be um to be uh, to be brought in as a comedy trio with with Zicky Dice and Johnny Swinger. I think that was a bad move. First of all, I think Jackson Stone should have been an Impact Wrestling a long time ago. A long time ago. I mean, he won that, uh, I don't want to get into it, but he won the, the gut check a long time ago, two, like, two years ago. He's still waiting for his, his, his spot. And then you have uh, Jason Hotch and Jack Price also uh, also with uh, the latest gut check winners. And you're going you're gonna to put them with Zicky Dyson and, and Johnny Swinger? I mean... What are they doing? That? That's 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 silly. That's come. That's totally silly. Why why not have um somebody else mentor them? Why not have like uh like Moose mentors uh, Jackson Stone and and Jason Hodge or or you can have um uh, Rich Swan mentors all three of them or something like that. Something uh, a a good wrestler to, to bring them in. Don't bring them in as jokes, right? This uh, just I don't um. I just just wasn't a fan to see that, and I can't recall. I don't think we've seen them with with the two before. We might have. I just might have been. Maybe I missed it, or but I think that was a mistake. I don't think Jack the Stone, Jason Hodge, Jack Price, the potential future of Impact Wrestling, should be uh, brought in with Ziggy Dice and and uh, Johnny Swinger, perennial joke losers. Um, I I people like Johnny Swinger. They say he's entertaining. He's funny. Great, but not not don't bring in the possible future of Impact Wrestling and place him with uh, Ziggy Dyson and, and Johnny Swinger. That's that's the way. That's that's how I feel. How about um, bring Jason Hodge and Jackson and and uh, Jack Price in as a, as a tag team? 
you know, have bring them in as, as a tag team, up and coming tag, something something different. Just not with Ziggy Dykes and Johnny Swinger. That's a mistake. Okay, I don't want to. I don't want to um talk about that uh <laughs> too much. I don't want to talk about that anymore. I think I made my point. And uh, then we have uh, Josh Alexander and uh, Rich Swan. They're talking backstage, and Alexander wants to face uh, Swan. Uh, wants Swan to win the the number one contender match. Uh, he said he would like to face. Well, I don't know if he said he wants him to win, but he said he would like to face Swan. Um, for the he would like to put his title up against Swan. Uh, Vincent shows up and says Eddie Edwards is going to become the number one contender, and then hints um, that uh, Josh may want to join. Uh, may want to join uh, Honor No More. Just playing mind games with Josh Alexander. Uh, and so that was that segment. Then we go to match two. Josh Alexander is not going to join Honor No More. They're, they're, they might be playing mind games, you know, going back and forth a bit. But I, I think the mind games are going to stop now because we know who the number one contender is. We'll get into that um, um, later on in the review. Uh, but uh, just just play little mind games with Josh Alexander. He's not going to be joining Honor No More. But they're, you know, they're, they're trying to... Uh, Play those mind games with uh, with uh, the walking weapon. Uh, so match two, Kenny King. Uh, I don't know more is Kenny King against uh, Heath. No, Heath um, took out Kenny King at Emergence. And so um, we have uh, Kenny King and Heath going one-on-one here. Uh, so this match, actually, I wasn't really looking forward to. I wasn't really looking forward to, but it wasn't a bad match. It wasn't that bad. I, I, the, the way I say that is I think Kenny King is extremely talented, and I think they should push him as an X-Division uh, title ch uh, contender. Uh, just not a big fan of Heath in, in Impact Wrestling. I'm just, uh, just not a big fan of Heath. Not a big fan. I, I understand uh, Honor No More took out Rhino, so he's trying to get revenge on Rhino, one one member of Honor No More at a time, by showing up and taking one one out at a time. Uh, but I'm just, just not the biggest fan of Heath. So, uh, but Kenny King, Kenny King hit some nice moves here. He hits a corkscrew, a uh, dive to the outside on Heath. Uh, he, King hits a blockbuster on Heath as well. Um, but Heath in trouble makes makes the babyface comeback. He uh, hits a neck breaker for two. Uh, Heath hits the wake up call. Uh, eventually, hits the wake up call for the win. Uh, but then Honor No More comes out, surrounds the ring. Uh, they all attack Heath. Um, they speed him down. Uh, then Eddie Edwards wants PCO to finish off Heath. Uh, PCO wasn't participating in the beatdown. He was just off to the side. Uh, and uh, Eddie Edwards wants PCO to finish finish off Heath. Uh, but he's reluctant. He delays. Uh, then And he gets up, Heath gets up. And he hits a wake-up call on Mike Bennett and uh, escapes the ring. And uh, Eddie Edwards looks pissed. Uh, so more of an indication that uh, PCO will be either um, kicked out of the group, will be leaving the group, will be leaving Impact Wrestling. Uh, but um, I think um, I, I think we could expect a babyface turn from PCO. I'm kind of thinking at Bound for Glory, at Bound for Glory, uh, we'll we'll see uh, the or, or a little after Bound for Glory, and um, I'll, I'll tell you why at the at the end of the review. The match, like I said, the match itself was okay. It wasn't great, but it wasn't bad either. I'm talking about Heath and Kenny King. But we we know uh, after watching the match, the purpose of this match was to continue the PCO turning babyface storyline. So that was that was the whole purpose of this match. Uh, but Kenny King, so talented, I think he should be an Impact um, X Division uh, uh, contender without a doubt. Without I think him and Mike Bailey could uh, could light it up one on one. Then in the back, we got uh, Sabin, Shelly, and Koshida. Uh, and then we got a segment with them. Uh, next week, we find out that they will take on Violent by Design. So it will be Sabin, uh, Chris Sabin, Alex, Shelly, Koshida taking on Eric Young, Diener, and Joe Doring next week. Then on and no more backstage segment, they're on a staircase somewhere in the back. Uh, Bennett and Taven confront uh, after they, they speak for a bit and then. Uh, Bennett and Taven leave. They walk through a door, and Scott Demore happens to be right there. They confront Scott Demore. They say they want their title shot, uh, but Scott Demore, Scott Demore says, "Doctor," <laughs> and Doctor Ross says, "Doctor Ross makes a decision here." Doctor Ross says, uh, "Luke Gallows has to heal for a few weeks." So uh, Luke Gallows, uh, Doc Gallows, is um, not able to compete for a few weeks, as per Doctor Ross. So um, no, uh, no Doc Gallows, you know, Dr. Ross orders. No Doc Gallows. So Scott Demore then says, you know what? Next week I'll make Carl Anderson versus Mike Bennett 
And if Anderson wins, then uh, Maria Canellis will be banned from ringside because Scott Demore is kind of getting pissed off at, at the two. Um, so um, he makes the match, and then he adds a stipulation. If Anderson wins, uh, Maria Canellis will be banned from ringside. When uh, Matt Taven and Mike Bennett uh, challenge uh, Gallows and Anderson for uh, the Impact Wrestling World Tag Team Championship. Uh, and there is no doubt in my mind that Matt Taven and Mike Bennett, with Canales or without Canales out there, will become the next Impact Wrestling World Tag Team Champions. No doubt in my mind. I, I think um, Lone Star um, Lone Star Stampede will be the final appearance of of uh, the Good Brothers in Impact Wrestling. They've already booked for a number of New Japan Pro Wrestling shows in September. Uh, so I, I do believe Lone Star Stampede will be the final appearance of the Good Brothers in Impact Wrestling. And there's no doubt in my mind, Taven and Bennett take titles from them. That match is actually, you know what's funny though? You know what's funny? Uh, the match has already been booked. <laughs> the match has been booked for Lone Star Stampede. Uh, the match has been booked, uh, but on TV it hasn't really been booked yet. But but they've announced that Impact Wrestling social media actually announced that the tag team um, a match will take place. The title match will take place at Lone Star Stampede. Uh, but as per TV, it, it hasn't been uh, hasn't been made official yet. Uh, and they have a tendency of doing that too. Like they announce Impact Impact Wrestling does that quite often. Like they'll announce a match on social media. They'll announce a match on social media. And, and then, um, like for example, um, well, we'll get. Well, for example, uh, one segment on this show, uh, which happened a little later, but I'll talk about it now. One segment was uh, Jordan Grace. Jordan Grace is being interviewed by GM Miller uh, about Masha Slavovich, Diana Perazzo, Chelsea Green come out. They're the Impact Wrestling Knockouts Tag Team Champions. They verbally go at it with Grace. Mia Yim shows up. Uh, and um, she um, gets involved in the verbal exchange. Uh, and then we find out uh, next week, um, Mia Yim challenges Perazzo and Green to defend the Impact Knockouts tag titles against Jordan Grace and Mia Yim. Uh, and so that match is made official for next week on this week's TV show. But the match was actually announced, like, I think a week ago, or it was announced over a week ago, there was one of the matches that are, that are going to be part of these TV tapings. So the match has already been announced on the social media, but uh, they're making their match, match official now on, on TV. So the match hasn't been announced on TV. You know, you know what I'm saying? <coughs> the, the match isn't announced on TV yet, but it's been announced on social media. So like, there's no surprise. Like, you know, the match is going to happen, but they, but they have to put it together anyway on TV. You know, they have a tendency of doing that. You know, announcing a match, uh, but they don't make it official on TV just yet. But even though you know, know the match is happening, you know, again, Gallo said um, Anderson are going to be defending at Lone Star Stampede, and uh, match um, is made official, but already. But you have Bennett and and Taven on TV. Asking, um, asking for the match to be made already when it's already been made. Well, I guess you could say this is the TV taping, uh, so they weren't aware that it was made. Okay, you could that 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 could be the argument as well, that this is a TV taping. They weren't aware that um, the match has been made. Okay, so that, that kind of makes sense. But but I, and also they're probably trying to sell tickets as well uh, to Lone Star Stampede. So that that would be another reason. So okay, so that no when when I when I think about it now, it kind of makes it kind of makes a little sense. It kind of makes a little sense. To announce a match, you know, to announce a match for a show, but um, let it all um, come together on TV. But anyway, um, let, let's let's get into a third match, uh, which was Killer Kelly versus Savannah Evans. Um, I, I kind of I thought this was going to be a squash match for for Killer Kelly, uh, but it wasn't. Evans got in some um, some nice offense. So early on, um, uh, Savannah Evans actually grabs Kelly by the throat. And Kelly just smiles, <laughs> takes Evans' other hand, and puts it on her throat as well and smiles. And the crowd, just the crowd popped for this. The crowd loved Killer Kelly. They were just chanting Killer Kelly uh, throughout the match. Um, but, uh, yeah, she, uh, Savannah Evans gets in some decent offense uh, in this one. Uh, so it wasn't a, really a squash match. I thought it was going to be one, but but Kelly um, eventually catches El Evans in the killer clutch, uh, and, and Evans has the, no choice but to tap out. So this match was uh, exactly what what 
I thought it was supposed. This match was exactly what it was supposed to be. A big win for Killer Kelly, um, and a, a, to um, set up uh, Killer Kelly versus Tasha Steels. Uh, so Tasha Steels was out on, on ringside watching uh, throughout the entire match. Uh, so that's basically what it was: setting up um, Kelly against Tasha Steels. Kelly Kelly is a uh, terrific addition uh, to the Impact Wrestling roster. I love her, her character. I love her re-entrance. Uh, so happy that Killer Kelly is in Impact Wrestling, and I'm expecting big things from Killer Kelly. Killer Kelly, Tasha Steele is probably going to happen at Victory Road, uh, but I'm glad. I'm glad they're um, they're putting her up against um, Top Contender. It's not made official yet, uh, but I think that's where they're going. Uh, but. I'm, I'm glad there. She Kelly Kelly is getting some big wins uh, right off the bat here over Savannah Evans, and uh, then um, I think next next opponent for her will be uh, Tasha Steeles. Next big opponent for her will be Tasha Steeles. Then we have Jessica Rosemary and Taya uh, uh, backstage segment. Jessica says that she has a match next week, and Rosemary is not happy about it. But uh, Jessica is very happy. She's all giddy and giggly and. Uh, I'm I'm not a fan of this Jessica character. You know, it's it's just Sue Young doing Susie. Only it's um it's Jessica Havoc doing Jessica. So I'm not uh it's just Havoc doing Jessica. So I'm not uh you know it worked with Sue Young. Sue Young was able to pull it off. I just uh, just uh, Jessica Havoc's not pulling it off in my opinion. I'm I'm not a fan of it. It's just it's it's just a a, a, um, a redo of uh, Sue Young becoming Susie. So. I, not a fan of it. Not a fan of it at all. But uh, she has her first match. Jessica has her debut match next week. In uh, the character, Jessica has her debut match next week. And uh, really looking forward to that one. <laughs> all right. Then um, we spoke about uh, Jordan Grace already being interviewed. Uh, then match four. <coughs> And I apologize for being congested today, guys. I, I, I sincerely apologize. Sorry about that. Um, the match four, we have Mike Bailey uh, and Chris Mike, Speedball Mike Bailey defending the Exhibition Championship against um, Bullet Club's Chris Bay. Now, this match, I'm not going to talk much about this match, but I'm, I am going to say that this match was freaking spectacular. This match was so damn spectacular. Um, it starts out, you get a feeling out process between the two to start. Uh, Bailey hits a drop kick, uh, knocking Bay to the outside. Some more moves that took place, some more action. Uh, Bay hits a springboard DDT on Bailey. Um, Chris Bay hits a double stomp. He's on the top turnbuckle. Chris Bailey, uh, Chris Bailey, Chris Bay. Mike Bailey is lying on the, on the ropes. Chris Bay hits a double stomp while Mike Bailey is lying on the top rope. It's a double stomp on Mike Bailey. And that was an amazing move. And there was some other just fantastic moves, some, some fantastic back and forth action in this one. And eventually, um, Bailey hits the ultimate weapon on Chris Bay for the win. But as I said, this match was just, just spectacular, just freaking spectacular. Bay and Bailey, I said I wasn't going to spend too much time on it because it was so good, and um, just by calling it spectacular would be enough, but let's, let's talk about it for a little bit. Uh, Bay and Bailey, two immensely talented wrestlers. Um, this was an epic match. I mean, this was this was Thursday. Bailey has this epic match against um, Chris Bay, and also on Thursday, he had an epic match against uh, Jacob Fatu for West Coast Pro. Of course, the West Coast Pro one was live. This was taped, uh, but Thursday was a... Um, was um, a two epic match night for a uh, speedball Mike Bailey, uh, but uh, the only th again the only thing I don't like about this one like like the first match it was too short it was too short but again TV time they only have so much on TV uh, you really believe that we may see a title change in this one I thought well we, we could it was believable that a title change might be coming um, but but. But uh, Bailey, of course, victorious. Um, Bailey's run as exhibition champion has been absolutely fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. He's absolutely killing it as the exhibition champion. And I hope we see a rematch because this match was pure fire, was absolutely epic, highly recommended. It was probably the best TV uh, match of the week from any promotion. You know, and and I, I don't watch the WWE, so you know, I... Uh, maybe it's not fair of me to say that, but I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say it anyway. I think, think this was the best match of the week, uh, TV match of the week with, for, uh, from any promotion. This was, just, was just 
just fantastic. Absolutely love this match. Again, it should have been a little longer, and I hope we see a rematch. Then we have Brian Myers running into uh, Bapinda Gujar uh, backstage. Uh, Gujar says Myers is not done with him, uh, which means uh, we're probably going to get another match between Brian Myers and Bupinder Gujar. Gujar, not Gujar, Gujar. I want to get his name right. Sorry. Um, so next week we have um, Vex versus uh, Mia Yim and Jordan Graves for the Impact Knockouts Tag Team Titles. We got Jessica's debut. Will be, and uh, then we have Violent by Design taking on Chris Saban, Chris, um, Alex Shelley, and Kushida, which should be a fantastic match as well. <clears throat> so we go into the main event. The main event is a six way, a six way elimination match. Excuse me. Sorry, sorry, guys. <clears throat> it's a six-way elimination match. Um, uh, six-way elimination match to determine uh, the number one contender for the Impact uh, World Heavyweight Championship. We have Eddie Edwards versus Moose versus uh, Steve Macklin versus Sammy Callahan versus Rich Swan versus Bandito. Um, so let's just talk about some of the the, the the moves that happened. This one, some of the action in this match, and then we'll talk about um, my thoughts on it. So Swan and Bendito uh, start and have a nice, even exchange. Uh, later on, Moose and Macklin tag each other in back and forth as they work on Rich Swan. Sammy Callahan is in um, later on, and he takes out Moose and Macklin. Uh, Moose spears um, Sammy Callahan for the win, uh, for the pin. So Sammy Callahan is eliminated. And then Macklin, Moose is... Um, Moose's partner, um, partner in crime, uh, they join forces against Callahan. Steve Macklin rolls up Moose for, for three. So Moose is eliminated by Steve Macklin. Uh, Moose is pissed. Moose is furious. He pushes Steve Macklin. And, um, but, uh, but yeah, so um, Macklin is, uh, Macklin eliminates Moose. And um, then um, I think Callahan came in and attacked Macklin. And, uh, but eventually Macklin was, um, was, um, Taken out by Bandito. Uh, Bandito, a dive to the outside. Oh, yeah, they were, Macklin's on the outside. Callahan is fighting with Macklin and Moose. Uh, Bandito dives to the outside of Macklin, puts Macklin back into the ring, hits a 21-plex on Steve Macklin, uh, gets the pin, and Macklin is eliminated. Bandito hits a Spanish fly on Swan for two. Uh, Swan hits a Phoenix Splash on Bandito, uh, but Eddie Edwards comes in, throws Swan out of the ring, uh, hits a Boston, Boston Knee Party on Bandito uh, for the pin, so Bandito is eliminated, uh, and the crowd was not happy, and neither was I, but we're going to get more into that. Um, so after a few minutes of, of, of great back-and-forth action uh, that could have gone either way, uh, Eddie Edwards eliminates Rich Swan and becomes a number one contender uh, for Josh Alexander's Impact Wrestling World Heavyweight Championship. Um, there was one point actually hit. This is the second. Um, uh, what had happened was um, Eddie Edwards hit a boss D party on Rich Swan. I thought that was the end of it. Uh, but actually Swan kicked out. Uh, and uh, then he comes back uh, with a diehard driver. Um, Ed Edwards is a diehard driver on Swan for the win. Uh, and then that's how he eliminated uh, Rich Swan and becomes no more contender. Um, I don't know more comes in. They carry Ed Edwards around the ring in celebration. So this match was a fun one. This match was a fun one. I really enjoyed it. Especially the final few minutes between Swan and Edwards. Again, it could have gone either way. It was very, very exciting to watch the final few minutes with um, Swan and Edwards. Um, and also, we got to set up now of a possible uh, breakup. I, I could see them. Why would they be? Why would they, they remain together? Uh, Moose and Macklin um, no longer, um, you know, teaming up together. Uh, they still have a common name, enemy in um, Sammy Callahan, but I think uh, now their the trust is no longer there between the two. Uh, but I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be honest. I'm not super excited about Edwards becoming the number one contender. No, I understand. I, I believe. Um, I believe Alexander mentioned that he's he's never he's never faced. I think it was on my podcast. Uh, I'm pretty sure, but I'll have to go. Don't I'll have to go back and double check. But I'm pretty sure he said that he's never faced Edwards before, and um, that's a that's an opponent that he would like to face. But um, 
I, I know Edwards is um, Impact Wrestling. Um, uh, you know, I don't want to say uh, uh, Impact Wrestling mainstay. He's been there for, for quite some time. Uh, big name in Impact Wrestling. Uh, so it, it kind of makes sense that Eddie Edwards becomes number one contender, especially with the honor no more they're, they're pushing as, as uh, the top uh, faction in Impact Wrestling. Uh, but the fans in attendance and myself wanted Bandito. I wanted Bandito to win this one. I don't know, Bandito versus Josh Alexander at Bound for Glory, for me, sounds a lot better than Josh Alexander versus Eddie Edwards. That, that's, that's just me. Um, I, I hope we see Bandito, a lot more Bandito in, in Impact Wrestling. Uh, the crowd was just chanting Bandito's name. He was the most over in the match. Uh, they're just chanting his name because it's a new face. It's a new face um, that, that, that they're seeing now. Instead of, the, instead of the, just the originals, Moose, uh, the, the usuals, I should say, not the original, the usual um, uh, talent that they see. They had Edwards, Moose, Macklin, Callahan, uh, Rich Swan. But then you had Bandito, who's a new fresh face. So they were rooting, they were chanting Bandito. They want a Bandito to win. You know, and I want a Bandito to win. And um, I guess, uh, I, I think Bound for Glory would have been a lot more exciting if it was Josh Alexander versus Bandito. But that's, that's how I feel. That, that's that's my feeling on it. Uh, but not taking anything away from Eddie Edwards, I'm sure we're going to get a great match at Battle for Glory. Maybe they'll do something where um, where Bandito are just shot at Victory Road. Uh, but 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 even if they don't, like Alexander versus versus Bandito, uh, Alexander defeating Bandito, who's a, who's a Lucha Libre, AAA superstar, international superstar, former Ring of Honor world champion, uh, would have been a great win for, for Josh Alexander to, um, to further cement himself as one of the best wrestlers in the world by defeating an international superstar like, like Bandito. So that's that'd be another reason why I would uh, would rather see Alexander and Bandito at Bound for Glory, uh, but um, but I'm not calling the shots. I'm not calling the shots. So by getting Eddie Edwards and Josh Alexander at Bound for Glory, I don't see Eddie Edwards winning that match. I, I see um, the odds stacked against Josh Alexander. But I was uh, talking about PCO earlier. I think PCO is gonna is gonna cost Eddie Edwards the match in this one or. I don't know more is going to come in and they're going to gang up on Josh Alexander and then PCO is going to come in. Um, it's going to come in and, and make the save or he's going to be in the ring and uh, he's going to, he's going to see what's going on and get tired of it and, and turn on, I don't know more uh, and help Josh Alexander defeat Eddie Edwards. So that, that's what I see happening at Bell Glory. I can see something like that happening at Bell Glory. Uh, but but anyway, it was a great show. Uh, rating it from one to ten, one being the lowest, ten being the highest. This was an eight point six, eight point six. And you know, this this being a great show, I saw the the viewership only ninety two thousand people. They only had ninety two thousand viewers to watch this um, show. So ninety two thousand viewers. And uh, everyone else in the in the crowd got to see an amazing professional wrestling show. Got to see an amazing two hours of professional wrestling, and that's exactly what it was an amazing two, uh, amazing hour and a half, hour and a half of professional wrestling. Impact Wrestling. Uh, Brian Hamler actually on his podcast repping it up with RJ. He uh, did indicate that before he left that Impact Wrestling was was. was looking for a new home he said i think he said they were under negotiations um with with other um networks and i'll tell you if they get to a bigger network if they go ahead and do that i didn't think they would do that because the the owner of access of access tv owns um i'm sorry anthem owns Access TV and Impact Wrestling so it only made sense that Impact would be on Access but if they could look for a new home and they can get on a bigger channel uh, with um, with um, a, uh, a channel that gets to more people, you know, a, a, a bigger reach. I think if people start watching Impact Wrestling, I think the ratings are going to go up considerably because right now Impact Wrestling is the best wrestling show on TV today. Yeah, I'm saying it. Uh, people are going to disagree with me, but I don't care. Impact Wrestling is the best professional wrestling show on TV. Week in and week out, they deliver big time. 
There's nothing that you can watch on AEW. There's nothing you can watch on WWE. There's nothing you can watch in MLW. There's nothing you can watch on NWA that would match, um, that would even come close to Speedball Mike Bailey against Chris Bay, what we saw on uh, this week. So, um, and, and all the other matches on there as well. So Impact Wrestling is the best wrestling show on TV today, hands down, my opinion. And if I could get to a, another channel with a broader reach that reaches more people, and more people start watching it. More people are gonna get. More people are gonna, are, are gonna get. Um, are gonna want to watch it week in and week out. More people are going to enjoy it. More people are gonna realize how great Impact Wrestling is. So I'm hoping. I'm hoping that uh, they do um, find a bigger channel to get to, because, like I said, once they get to a bigger channel and more people start watching it and more people start discovering it, more people are gonna become fans. So uh, Impact Wrestling. Let's get to a bigger channel. All right, so I'm going to leave it at that for now. Um, thank you very much for joining me today. Hope you enjoyed the review. Sorry, uh, um, just a little stuffed up today, so I do apologize again. Uh, but um, I'm watching the news. Anything breaks, I'll be back. But until then, thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye, and stay safe, everyone. So long. Bye-bye.